The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. I did hear that they were coming through necessary media. Because it's necessary. <laughs> necessary media. it's necessary yes yes ladies and gentlemen i am back again your host and friend michael d Oliveira, ushering in the necessary era every wednesday here live on comcast channel 95 and if you're watching this on youtube make sure you subscribe this way i'm gonna put it over here somewhere right there now ladies and gentlemen i just noticed this uh a difference and if this is one of the t if second third fourth fifth tenth if you're a pro at this show great i came into the studio today i haven't even noticed this first time so i'm looking at the screen that we got the the green screen going on in the background when this gets on youtube because i had some plans for it now that i'm seeing it in full effect by the time this gets on youtube i might mess with this video just for the fun of it i'm not saying you're going to see any like steven spielberg style effects you know this ain't uh michael bay or anything no, no transformers are going to happen here but but we'll see what i can do with it um Again, it looks, it looks like it's got a lot of potential. But what else has got a lot of potential is this show. So like I say every week, I need you to get, make sure you tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, go knock at your neighbor's door. I've told you before, and we've had city councils on before to tell you this is, is Fall River is a very welcoming city. And if you go to one party, uh, one neighbor, and you feel questionable, go knock on your other neighbor's door. You know, get, get a gr it's gr uh, group, group activity. Like what used to happen with Pokemon until that, I guess, crashed and, and burned. That's a whole nother subject. I'm not going to get into Pokemon this week. We have a lot going on this week. There's so much to talk about on the national level as well. Uh, there's some things on the local level, but I think more, more or less this, this week, I'm going to cover some things on the state level because we do have, there's a very important thing about today that I'm going to mention in a couple minutes. But I also want to point out the fact that we do have the, the telephone number up. If there's anything you want to talk about that's either has to do with a local issue, we had a lot of local issues this week that might be of interest to you that maybe to me just haven't jumped out yet or just aren't as important to me in the spectrums, call in, throw it in the discussion. Maybe some other one, someone else agrees with you. If you feel you want to get in on the conversation I'm talking about, feel free to call in. Again, uh, let you know the number's 508-730-3222. Make sure, again, you call in whenever you want, get your topic out there, we'll, we'll discuss. Um, now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, but I guess something I want to lead off with, because again, I do think it's very important and there's still time, ladies and gentlemen, it's only, it's just turned 6 p.m., there's still time. Today is the last day to register to vote in Massachusetts. Now, if you go to the Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash The Necessary Media, like I tell you every time, if you haven't yet, make sure you go and click and like that. And make sure you also go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash The Necessary Media. If you go on the YouTube page, I mean, uh, the Facebook page, I posted uh, earlier today, and I'll again share later tonight, because again, last day to do it, uh, the means in which to check if one if you're registered, and then how to go about actually registering after that. Now, with that being said, last day to register, yes, to vote, yes. Now, we have this back and forth that's been going on since what, now, over a year of the, you know, the presidential debate, the big one, the big cojone out there, the big, the big uh, topic to vote on, the president. Now, with that being said, you have now we've whittled it down to two main uh, candidates. We got the Republican side and the Democratic side. We got Trump, Hillary, and I know for a lot of you people out there who are still, you know, pushing for hope on the the change, the third party candidate. Uh, candidate. We got Gary Johnson for the Libertarian Party, and then we got Jill Stein for the Green Party. Now, by all means, vote your conscience. Vote what makes you happy. And, do whatever you want, but you can register to vote for that. But what I want to make, uh, put a little bit of time on while I have it here, is it's not just about the presidential debate this coming November. We have a couple questions on the ballot that are going to be specific for Massachusetts, so this is going to affect you in some uh, way, shape, or form. 
Um, there's two big ones. I'm going to get to those in a second, but I want to I cover maybe two smaller ones that people might not be so aware of. Um, we have question one, okay, that's going to be about expanding the slot parlors, uh, specifically has to do with the licensing right now. So in case you're unfamiliar, when Massachusetts had passed to be able to, you know, increase the whole the gambling situation in the state, they had certain uh, guidelines in it. And one of them was uh, for slot parlors, they, they were giving away one license. So, so far, we have one license that was awarded, and I believe, believe it's to Plainville. So out in Plainville, Mass, I believe they were awarded the license for a slot parlor. And question one would be basically to expand that by allowing for, I believe it's an additional license. So for, I might be wrong, but I believe it's for a second license. Um, now, I don't usually try to throw it out there, but I'm, or I try to be unbiased if I can, but I'll just throw it out there. If somebody wants to call in with the opposite, how about that? If you got a negative, because I can't see the possible negative other than people giving up their money on their own free will, I'm all for it. You want to vote? We could have, I don't care if you had a slot parlor on every corner, okay? If someone wants to give the money, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, actually, time out. Hold on, bring that back. DJ, bring that back. DJ, bring that back. I just said, okay, I don't care if you have a slot parlor on every corner. Um, you do have a slot parlor basically on every corner. You have so many ways to get a scratch ticket, it's unbelievable. Now, I don't know about you, but if, you go to, if you've ever been to a slot parlor, so what is the difference? You're extending the play, how much you play. So you put it in, you bing, 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 lights go off, you get you know, glossy-eyed, and you think you, you get a chance to win. That's the difference between that and, and a scratcher, as they'll call it. Uh, again, I'm not telling you to go f give them your give them your monies, right? Again, old school necessary media radio fans, um, which I'm going to try to bring that back that segment too. Don't worry. There's a lot of things that are going to be coming up. Again, I, I need the support to grow the show a little bit for time wise, but I'm going to try to bring back some more uh, of the the old school segments into play. But I mean, if you're going to be able to get a scratch ticket on every corner, I see no reason why I can't have a slot parlor on every corner. So again. If you, feel, if you feel there's any kind of a way to disagree on that, feel free to call in. I challenge you. Show me how you shouldn't vote for more slot parlors. 508-730-3222. Now, that's that vote. Again, question one for slot parlors. The other um, question that not too many people might be aware of, I had no clue about this until actually doing a little bit of research to, to, to know what to bring you guys. And um, question four has to do with uh, expanding the, I guess the best way to put this is expanding free-range chickens. And in Massachusetts, what my understanding on this, and if you have a better understanding, if you're, uh, if you're involved with PETA, uh, somebody on the animal rights movement strongly with it, you probably had a lot of facts for this. If you want to call in, call in. My understanding on this is what it would do is uh, voting, uh, I believe voting yes, I believe, again, call and clarify if you want, but I believe voting yes, what it would do is expand uh, the amount of free range chickens or expand the limitations put on farms where they had to have uh, more uh, free range chickens is, a, is kind of a crutch phrase. What it really is saying is that you had to have, for a chick, certain amount of chickens, you had to have, they have the room to expand, a certain amount of room to expand uh, their wings, move around, um, and maybe space above them too. It's basically, you, you, you can't keep them within a certain amount of con, uh, confinement. Um, so this was, is to expand basically how many of those types of chickens you have that you need to have extra room. So. Again, for me, to me, I don't, I don't need a chicken that I'm going to eat eventually anyway, because I, for now, I still eat chicken, okay? El Pollo Loco, I still eat chicken for now. Um, I don't feel like a chicken needs its own whole, you know, yard, but, but if you have a lot of chickens in the yard, fine. Um, but I also don't feel the need that a chicken needs to be so crammed that it can't do anything. That is horrible to me personally as my view of just everything has some kind of a, a conscious whether you like it or not that's my belief and I just don't feel right about that so I would vote again I, I'm look into it but I believe it's voting yes would expand the ability to give them that room and I know I'm gonna double check before I vote but I'm voting for the whatever gives them that extra room that's fine by me and if there's specifics that I'm missing because there's always two sides to this coin where maybe the other the, there's more to it than I understand there but that's what I understand that's what I would vote for. Now, the two big ones. Uh, I'm going to get to one first because the, the second one has a, a spin-off topic I want to get into. But one of the big ones we covered on this show um, a couple weeks ago, I had uh, it's about the expanding the legalization of marijuana and also with the uh, regulation of marijuana, said marijuana for taxation and whatnot. Now, again, I had on previous show, I had uh, state rep Alan Silva uh, to represent the against, and I had former uh, Far River Mayor Will Flanagan on to represent the, the fours. 
And also, side note to that, when the show ended last time, we said to be continued. Well, right when the show had ended and we went off air, we were having a conversation. The, the to be continued will be continued the Wednesday before Election Day, which I believe is the second. I might be wrong on that as well. I need to check something. I'll try to check quick, actually, while I'm rambling here. But I believe it's the second. And my point being is, so we're going to have them on again. So make sure to mark your calendars. I'm also, again, on the Facebook page. I'm going to spread the old show. I'm going to ask people to, to view it. View the old show on the YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash The Necessary Media. It says right at the, it's the last video, I believe, that was uploaded, which it's a different issue, folks. I admit, i got to get on that. We had a great show last week about the next subject. i got to upload that soon. But um, I'm just double-checking right now for you. So as I mentioned, there, review the old show. Any questions or comments that you feel were not touched on in that show, make sure to let me know, and I'm going to bring it up no problem. And from what I saw, both guests I had, had did a great job of handling questions and uh, being po politically okay. Like, we, we handled the conversation. No one got, if anything, I was surprised. It looked like I thought Alan Silver was going to be very strong against. He came out for. Um, now, as I was mentioning, I just wanted to double check. It is going to be the second, so I was correct. So November 2nd is right now scheduled to be the, sec the continuation of that. So, again, I sh I'm scheduled to have uh, uh, state rep Alan Silver and former uh, former mayor Will Flanagan on. Now, the legalization of marijuana, it's up to you to decide. Again, you want to argue with me? Feel free to call in. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the personal things you're going to hear from me on every show going forward, or in every show I've ever done in the past, um, I personally don't understand how anyone out there can justify telling someone else you can't not put something in their body. I don't know how anyone else can tell someone that you, they cannot consume something up until something affects that person, the, the person challenging negatively. Meaning, as long as you don't do something to harm someone else, I don't care what you do, one, and I don't understand how anybody can support someone else telling someone what to do that doesn't affect anyone else negatively. It, does, it just doesn't make sense, okay? Repeat, let me bring that back. It just doesn't make sense. Think about it, and now, just because if you're against it, that's fine. There's so many things I'm against in this life, but again, if it's not affecting you, I don't see the justification, but if you feel like you want to call in and argue, go ahead, I dare you. Um, but that's that one topic. Now, the other important topic that's been, we had a get, uh, the guest last week on the show to talk about it, um, and we also just had a debate here um, at the BCC uh, Studios, Bristol Community College here, FRC Media, Spindle City Straight Talk, uh, South Coast Media, they had put on, uh, debate, the charter school debate. So that's what the question is. So uh, question number two is about expanding uh, the charter school cap. And again, I promise you, I'm working on it. I have, I've had little, little time right now, but I'm working on it and editing, uh, editing it to get up on the YouTube uh, channel, and I will spread that as well. And if you haven't caught the debate, search out the debate. It's easy to find. It was a great, uh, great debate. And speaking of that, I was in attendance at the debate. First official attendee as press. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that because it's gonna grow. And I'm gonna remember that first incident when I, when I walk into a place and, and they say, oh, wait, here he comes, here he comes. I'll remember where it started, so. But, uh, so that, the charter school debate, I, right now, I'll have a one-on-one a, a -on -one with everybody watching. This is just me talking to you, okay? This is just us, nobody else around. This is a, a intimate conversation. I, at first, uh, was just 100% on expanding charter school. And I've also said, admittedly, that even though I try, I believe I'm unbiased on this, I do have uh, technically, well, I don't have a, ve a vested interest in that. I already have, uh, my son is already in uh, charter school in Fall River. He got in by the skin of his teeth, but he got in. So I literally have no vested, I have no other children that I plan on tr uh, trying to get in there. And I, again, if I already have them in there, I have no vested interest. But with all that being said, I understood what I, th I thought I understood both uh, sides of the equation, and at the time, I was just fully for supporting it. I'll admit I'm on the fence. I now, after hearing some uh, some information from both sides, I'm not for or against at this time, and I, it's kind of weird for me because I I agree with people who say how can anyone be on the fence about uh, certain things at this time, so close to election, but honestly, I feel like a lot of the information had just start has just started coming out, and I'm also going to give a uh, what I. Th my feel is the take on the debate that just took place, and I'm also going to give you my take on pretty much both sides at this moment on that subject because it's been covered 
uh, so much by myself and other people around me and what I've seen. My take on both sides first, their delivery on this topic is not what it should be or could be. Now, not to take away from either side or anybody on either side, but I feel, especially so with my show last week, and then even what I saw in the debate and conversations I had with people about the debate, everything about the debate went good, everything about the show went, that I had went good. But the problem was when I had talked to people and I felt it during the show, the show was good, but I had felt that it still, it, it, did, it didn't do what I try to do on the show, which is take something that some people might find to be dry and try to, what I like to say, and make it pop out to the audience, you know, put some spice on it. Ladies and gentlemen, I just saw what I believe is like a moth and I swear, if I get one of those moments where like at every debate or something, there's a fly, if I find a fly that pops up on me, okay, it's, it's a new trend in politics. If, if you get a fly, if you're in politics, prepare to have a fly, a battle with a fly. But anyway, um, I don't feel like they did any, they went as far as they could to help make it pop at the audience. Again, not to take away from either side, they brought a lot of information and um, on, on the show, I thought they did a good job putting their points forth. And then at the debate, I thought it got really interesting with certain points that were uh, pulled out, and, I, and I'm gonna try to uh, bring up my, my point on some of them. But I don't think they did the best job at hitting voters where it counts, like getting the voter to feel uh, some kind of a, an emotional investment. Mike Ro Senator Mike Rogers, who I did have as part of the show, was uh, also uh, part of the debate, and he even said at one point in the debate that he, he was going to go over some numbers and he wished he had some kind of a, a, a board in the back to work with because he knew that once you start going over numbers, people's eyes are going to glaze over and it's just not going to, it's going to go one, in one ear, out the other. It's just reality, which again is what I try to, to break here, break through that. Um, and it wasn't achieved. I don't feel it was achieved as far as bringing actual information because there was a lot of raw data. Where that that specific situation was achieved, and you know, I can see myself getting some criticism for this criticism, but whatever, I'll jump in the pool. Where I think there was a lot of emotional pop, where I think there was a lot of emotional, or a lot of like hitting the voter where it counts, um, but I feel it went a little, bit, a little bit too far. So bear with me if you take what I say the wrong way, but just bear with me a little bit too far. Um, on the pro, it got it a little bit on both sides, but on the pro charter side, um, and forgive me, I do not mean this in any disrespectful way. I just the only two people I honestly remember the names of was uh, Senator Rogers and uh, Rebecca Cusack because I had them on my show. So I know who the individuals were, and I took everything they said and, and appreciated it. But I just don't honestly remember the names. But the woman who was on the side for the for the charter expansion, um, she had stated that she was from, uh, Dominican heritage, and she basically and she did a great job of doing this. She did her main point was the the fact one of the main points of the topic is that with the charter school. Um, the charter side will say that what it does is it offers opportunities for choice where a lot of parents in certain situations might not have said choice. So say in another area, or even in Fall River, there's some parents who, who are able to do it. There's, there's schools, there are private schools. So there are parents who have the option of public school or private school. Then there are plenty of parents who would love to have their children in some kind of a raised educational situation, but just don't have the financial means to do so. So the charter school argument is that that provides a choice. I'm not, this isn't a conversation that's telling you go with the charter school expansion because I understand the counterpoint is, well, what about the kids who can't get in? They don't get a choice. So those are the two sides. But what she was highlighting is the fact that mostly, or this was her, my interpretation of what I got from her is that mostly one of the big issues with the, the choice aspect has to do with um, the, uh, children of color and the minority population. Now, again, everything she said was, was completely right. Um, I don't disagree with it at all. The only issue I had was she was the loudest one with passion, and she said it, and I agree with it. She was speaking passionately, and she she uh, cited her being Dominican. But hey, I'm, I got Portuguese in my blood. Maybe that's part of why I respect it, and I get it. Uh, but in just in general, she was the only one hitting with passion. I felt. So she probably hit really hard that segment of the community that wanted to hear what they should be doing and voting on. But my, prob my, my problem, my criticism was that angle got hit so hard over and over again on that side where, in my opinion, and I had to put myself in check, you know, I looked at myself and I said, all right, wait a minute, Mike, maybe this is a situation where 
white privilege has you not really thinking about it as much. But I'm gonna say again, I agree with everything she said. Totally valid points. What, not, again, not bothered me. What, if I'm looking at it as you need to hit the voter, what was concerning to me is a better word, is, and I don't think she was following through enough on certain points is, it's, that is an obvious issue because you're talking about people with struggling economic situations and there's so many factors in our uh, country and world that will determine people of color or, or minority will have situate or are minority, I should say, excuse me, that they'll have issues that are gonna hold them uh, in a lesser, uh, they have lesser opportunities or as frequent to gain some financial uh, benefits. So I get it, totally again, agreeing. But there are so many people who have that same situation who are also white. And the thing is, if, let's key in on something. For now, I know the demographic's gonna change, but for now, when, you, when you're saying it's a minority, it's because, at least for now, again, I understand demographics are changing, but if, if that's the minority, then the majority, is, you're saying, is white voters. So if, you're, if you want to get your point voted in your, in your uh, target, or, or what I mean to say is if you want your view on the, the question to be what people vote on, if you want them to agree to, with you and vote yes to expand the charter for that side and the no's want the no, then you have to understand your voter base. You need to get to hit all your voters. And I just felt like it went, it went too strong on that side. And it only, now in retrospect, as I'm speaking about this to you, the only reason I think it really stood out even that much is again, she was the only one who looked like she was throwing a lot of passion involved with it. And again, everybody else did a great job, but it was just a lot of information. I think the voters, people gotta understand, there's a lot of voters out there who they'll take in the information, but let's all be serious. It's, you're gonna, you, you're gonna take in information and then it's gonna hit you somewhere in here, and then that's where you make your decisions. You take in information up here, but you're gonna, most people are gonna make their decisions somewhere in the middle. So you gotta hit both sides. So I just wanted to get that out there. I, I, think, I think they still have time from now till election day, both sides, and if uh, both sides you know, want to get their point out. Oh, somebody please think of the children. I'm thinking of the children, and I'm saying if you want to get either if you're for the if you're for yes or for no on question two, expanding charter schools, I believe what you need to do is try to get your points out in a way that's clearer and less dry, like cl clear, dry, and to the point for the voter you're trying to hit. So that's all I want to say on that part. I'm running out of time, but I, there's so much stuff that I wanted to get into, so I'm, I'm glad I got that out. And again, go, make sure to register to vote. Check on those questions, not just about the president, but. A couple things I wanted to uh, touch on as well, and we're gonna get into the No Flex Zone Award winner soon, folks, so I'm gonna keep that for the end of the show. Uh, if you didn't know already, I just wanna touch on one thing real quick. We, in, in Fall River, here in Fall River, Mass, I guess uh, the news broke today that uh, Police Chief Dan Racine is pretty much on the verge of retiring. One of the, the headlines said retire, uh, but then when you read into the article, it says that he has not resigned yet and, is, and he's still officially the chief until his paperwork is put in, but that he has some medical issues going on, so he's out or he's basically out for the moment. And right now we have um, acting senior deputy uh, chief, Albert du uh, Duper, I believe his name is. I'm not sure if it's pronounced, but I'm reading it, Duper. Um, so we're gonna have a change, pretty much is what we're looking at in police chief. How do you think that'll affect things in Fall River? I mean, Dan Racine was on for, I believe it was six and a half years, somewhere around there. Um, some people will agree with some of the things that were done, so some people disagree, but I think we all will agree at least for me, my angle and people I know, I don't think many people I know were happy with any level of security, if you want to put it that way, in Fall River. So I'm not even directly, I don't, it's not my, my wheelhouse to, to critique the police chief and how he handles the budget and, and puts out the police. That's for either me to have a specific show on later, which I'll dive right into that, not a problem. But for right now, my general consensus would just be, most people I'm gonna to talk to are still gonna say that the threat level in, in Fall River is not to their liking. They would, they'd would they like it to be lower, they'd like the security level to feel higher, um, and there's ways that people feel like that could be fixed that weren't addressed. And we also have this whole issue that we hear over and over again, the epidemic of the heroin problem, and how will that go on in the future? Are we gonna see any changes with how uh, people are handled who are arrested with such drug charges? Well, let's find out. We'll wait and see, I guess, on that. Um, <laughs> glass ceiling's breaking, I'm not sure. We'll find out. Maybe somebody will come in and break the mold and change everything in how we handle, again, the drugs, because that's one of the biggest issues. Maybe if we switch our approach to how we handle not only those who are, are using and being found you know, overdosed, or a selling, et cetera. If we, maybe if we go into this with a new fresh eyes and uh, hit it in a new way, maybe we can actually solve this problem. There's gotta be another way for this. But um, 
another thing I, I want to tie, uh, I want to get into quick before I get into the no flex zone. I want to get into my, for my own personal reasons, my own perf personal aggravations on this. I was talking to a couple people today about this, and I feel it's important to get it out in case you're not aware of this. Um, if you're not aware of the name Julian Assange, I'm going to give you the, the fastest rundown summary of this I can. A short time ago, uh, I believe it was around two years ago, maybe three, but a short time ago, we had a situation where a uh, U.S. serviceman um, got some information uh, from the U.S. government that was technically classified. He went about the ways to get it, totally illegal, he got it, but he got this information that he felt the American people needed to hear because it had to do with the NSA, the wiretapping, how we handle people, uh, countries overseas, foreign entities, all about that, all, basically everything. The person got the information and wanted to get it out to people in order to, sh to showcase the go uh, government corruption. That was his, the, the main point. Uh, and that information was then given over to, so uh, to an entity called w WikiLeaks who would distribute the information. And Julian Assange is the person who's pretty much the head of that, the face of that, and again, the face of distributing it. He's not the whole entity. It's a very complex organization there, but he's like the face of it. And because of that, when certain information was coming out, he had to to seek asylum overseas, and he found it first in Russia, then eventually Russia got enough pressure where they had to, to let him go when the uh, America, uh, US wanted to expedite him for charges. So I believe, if I understand this right, he's been in Ecuador recently. Well, now with during this debate, the Hillary Clinton and Trump debate, we've seen so many uh, classified things coming out through, through the emails uh, for WikiLeaks about Hillary Clinton, and now I guess just recently, um, Ecuador decided to cut, cut it out they decided to cut his internet. So they cut Julian Assange's internet. It's got posted about it. Why that's a problem for me? What you have to understand, and I gotta keep this to like 30 seconds, what you gotta understand is this was literally a situation where people were putting out information, almost raw data that had to get sifted through to find such information, and these were factual accounts. I don't remember anyone ever putting out info or any counter claims to claims that were put out by WikiLeaks. So what was happening is WikiLeaks is putting out these inf this information, literal information, and it was just not, it was rubbing some people the wrong way. Some people like what I would understand to be rumored uh, John Kerry, who was one of the people who reached out to Ecuador in order to have this cut. Why that's a problem for me? I've told people over and over again, one of the biggest reasons we have so much information available to us is because of the internet. Be grateful we have such free range on that right now, because what'll happen very shortly, if you just do the math and how history treats itself, once it's decided that it's become more of a nuisance than good, it's gonna get cut. So just be aware for that. I wanna go into the No Flex Zone Award quick, ladies and gentlemen, while I still got some time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're on the no-flex zone. The no-flex zone is a zone where you do not belong flexing. And by flexing, I mean doing anything you're not supposed to be doing in a place you're not supposed to be doing it. And this week's winner, ladies and gentlemen, is Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling, ladies and gentlemen, decides to come out and say he's going to run against Liz Warren for the Senate. Now, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not for Liz Warren, I'm not saying that, but Kurt Schilling... Let me just say right now, absolute way out of you. You are way uh, in the no flex zone. You have no business flexing in that zone of, of po senator senatorship uh, b politics. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're unaware of what happened in Rhode Island, the guy literally, okay, $75 million loan for his game company. He now costs Rhode Island approximately somewhere around up to $110 million when you actually put um, the uh, interest involved into this. The company goes bankrupt. The guy has no the guy has no clue what he's doing with it. He bankrupts his company and costs the, uh, Rhode Island, the state right next to us, at least 75 up to 110 million. And we're supposed to take that and go, oh yeah, let's roll that over to you going for the Senate. And in Massachusetts, you're gonna go up against Liz. Uh, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, you know Flex Zone Award winner Kurt Schilling for thinking he can get in that arena. Just stop it, bro. So ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be the show. Thanks for tuning in. Come back next week and every week, every every Wednesday live, 6 to 6.30 p.m.